Thank you for joining us for game number three, where Golden Guardians will be squaring off against Immortals Academy. It's time to look at the starting five crumbs. On the blue side, it is Golden Guardians. In the top lane, Zion Spartan. In the jungle, Hard. Mid laner are Blaze Olive. Bot and support, Gorica and Keith. And their coaches, Raz and Spooks. And facing them on the red side, it's Immortals Academy. You've got Alorum in the top lane, Potluck in the jungle. Insanity on mid lane. Bot is Altex, supported by Gate and their coach, Koop. And as we've mentioned, uh, there are some pretty heavy standing implications in a lot of these games, Crumb. So we'll have a look at where we are in just a moment. But uh, as we've said, awfully large tie. There was a six-way tie for third at one point. We have started to break that uh, for a little while longer. But for either of these teams, they need to pick up some wins. You can see Golden Guardians, Animortals down there near the bottom, but only one win, be one win behind the two teams currently yeah. tied for fifth. The win puts you at fifth. Another one can get you up to third. So the climb is very real for both these teams. And while it would be easy to look into someone being a favorite here, had both these teams had a starting line or a lineup of all starters, they don't. We've got Altex subbing in from the academy team playing in the uh, academy. And then you have Huhi that has stepped up to the LCS mm -hmm. is now being replaced by Keith. Yeah. So two different bot lanes. Yeah, it almost feels like uh, for the bot lane is at least it's going to be kind of a very different game. You know, not the two v two they would have prepared for. You know, a week or so ago, Gorica uh, has been hit or miss, and I think that's like about in about the most literal form of that expression. Like his good games look really good, and his bad games he's just kind of invisible. But Keith also a decent support. He was building up strength in the LCS been brought down back to academy where he belongs in some <laughs> in a sense of like he was very yeah. good in academy as an ad he was too volatile in the lcs he is kind of like gorica as you're saying where the highs are high but the lows are low and you don't want that when your support is so integral to setting up vision or setting up a place so there's a big transition here for him and something that took a while you know players like or jj or who he they didn't just transition to support within a few weeks. It was months, years. So if Keith were to continue here, I think this is a great training ground for him. As you know, as noted though, uh, lots of history for both Keith and Gate, who are on some teams together for a while. So certainly they have uh, experience against each other, now playing against each other in the same role. He might have asked him some tips. Hey, bro. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Gate's like, I got this guy. I'm ready to take him down. He starts telling him, yeah, you know what? Nautilus is not a good champion. Just don't pick Nautilus, dude. Trying to convince everyone to play set support. I guess he already convinced who he, now he's playing in LCS. It was a good combo, Callista set, I like it. Set goes in, resets his cooldowns in between the Fates calls and then gets another Haymaker or a Face Breaker. You know, it's one of those things where you just kind of think, Set's, Set's a pretty good champion. Yeah, pretty busted, pretty, good. pretty powerful. Put him on just about anywhere. I think he's been played in four different roles across the LCS and Academy. Three in each. It's funny because people thought, oh, yeah, he can't he can't close the gap, right? He's yeah. not that good. Have you ever seen a set get kited? Yeah. <laughs> he always yeah. gets in no, there. I see them all. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's dead. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, we'll see what Gates getting it fixed up there. Might be having a headset issue, but we'll let you know as soon as we have additional information. Regardless of all the changes in the 2v2 for this particular game, uh, certainly, as we mentioned, very heavy standing implications. So both teams will be looking to win out and get towards that third place spot, as you mentioned, but there can only be one in this particular game. Yeah, and when you're this close, right on the edge, and you don't even have your entire fate dependent upon you because other teams might just win more, you want to basically show your best hand right now. You want to make sure that your champion pool is the most prepared, that your draft is fine-tuned, this is where teams really earn their salary. Like, how good are you at prepping when crunch time comes around? And week seven, the end of week seven, is definitely that time. Also, again, on the Golden Guardian side of the bottom lane, you know, Keith's a very experienced player in Academy especially, but not in this role. I felt like one of the strengths of having who he next to Gorica in bot lane was that Gorica, who's a very new player to professional play, we could have a veteran who, even though he's mm. role-swapped, he's like... He's played a lot, uh, you know, he's been international, he's played in a lot of uh, LCS and Academy games, like, who is a very, like, nurturing kind of player, that's even how he was as a mid laner, so it felt like a good fit for a new AD who is coming up in the scene to peg with him. Now you have, effectively, two inexperienced players to their roles. Yeah, and Keith does not have that repertoire of being a supportive 
mid lane no, or a supportive he, bear. Like he, he was put as support because he just wanted to be aggressive. Like yeah, that was yeah, his he, criteria. He was killing people in academy as an AD when he was last here. So uh, he certainly, again, was very good in this league. I think he was getting better in LCS. So it's very interesting to see them swap back around. Yes, who he and FBI also have play time together so you can see why some of that synergy might be built in but for a lot of these teams it really just is about not missing playoffs yeah and that's what all the players goals usually are in any split it always starts with no we'll take it one game at a time and then you build it up to be like well we want that game to get us into playoffs yeah. and then we'll take one best of three at a time and we'll take one best of five at a time but it's always playoffs nobody ever goes into a split thinking oh i'm okay not making yeah. it this year surprising no one gamers want to keep playing more games yeah and yeah if you want to do that <laughs> you have to make sure you get to the first season you got to make sure you're good. <laughs> that too. Well, we'll see what happens here between these two sides. Again, lots of ties, but we'll break this one at least temporarily as the bands have begun. Pantheon and on. Get him out of there. Yeah, uh, the counter pick for Alorum with the Pantheon potential flex can be a nightmare to deal with from blue side if you're Golden Guardian. So I see the ban and I respect it because Pantheon's early game can snowball out of control. Yeah, it's interesting to see Pantheon get some attention in the last draft as well. Was also banned in phase one, I believe. So certainly been uh, making the rounds, it feels like. Not that many teams across either league playing him right now, but I think certainly pretty potent if you have put the hours in. Tom Kent, Yumi, and Aphelios, though, all taken out of the way. Aphelios makes sense. He's been uh, probably the best AD carry uh, since he was introduced. Senna is up. Senna is up currently. I don't know if Senna will stay up. Okay. <laughs> Dodge the bullet there. That would have been busted. Right. Speaking of busted, that, that gets happened. taken up. That, I mean, this, is, this is now becoming, you know, kind of the, the routine. First uh, seven things to happen in a draft. We're transitioning, you know, we're, we're starting to get the meta where everything is broken and it's only apparent right now where not everything is broken, but it's starting to get there. So we're like, oh, that's busted, that's busted, but not everything quite is. So some compositions can oh. end up being just outrageous. And this is what the team did in the last game. You take the Aatrox away, you don't want the flex, especially with Callista being banned. This is what the Golden Guardians ran. They can do it again if he wants to take a page out of who he and FBI. That's book. true. I am a little sad to not see the Nocturne back out in play for Alora, and that was fun into the set, but going to take uh, something a bit more standard in the top lane, and that would not be standard. We'll hold our tongue for a moment. That is very standard, though. It is Zoe for Insanity. So all the fun they yeah. were having, Almost. all of all of the fun picks from Insanity and Alorum have been shut down because we're two weeks away from playoffs, Scrum. Yeah, the fun is over for Immortals now. If we asked him, I like are this. You, how are you drafting? Right? He's reminding him, hey, man, you're not, you're not trying to have that much fun anymore. You're trying to win here? Well, they first big set, so they're also trying to win. I understand. Five seconds, MF for Gorka. So no Callista set combo, so more than likely, yep, it is gonna be the flex set. Still have to respect that it can go in the jungle and be just as useful as he is in the lane. Let's see what the third pick here for Immortals is though. So do have a complete bottom lane there for, uh, for Golden Guardians, excuse me, whereas IMT have actually taken two solos pretty early on. So not gonna have that many cracks at the bottom lane here. So interestingly enough, game one, we were talking about how you deal with Zoe and we're like, oh, I just ban it. I just remembered who dealt with it best, Bjergsen with Zillion. Because you can identify where she's going to jump in and predict those bombs. But that's such a hard thing to do that I'm curious if Golden Guardians can pick it up. Because Blaze Olive was playing with TSM Academy last year. He did play some Zillion then. And under the wing of Bjergsen, you might have caught a tip or two that helps him learn the matchup. Yeah, is again, you do run out of bands, you know, at some point. That's the reason why I was still seeing set get through, just because when Senna and Aphelios and friends are all running around, you have to have to pick something to give away. Uh, Ezreal and Sejuani, though, are going to be the phase two bands for Immortals and Golden Guardians, respectively. That will leave one final band here for IMT. The Ezreal band denying away the same kind of comp that EG ran, which was Zoe, Ezreal, Poke. Yep. Very annoying to deal with if you're not super crisp with your engages or let alone your laning phase. They actually just get too strong to deal with with the range. I feel like a lot of the, you know, longer time players as well, AD players, kind of like Thresh for supports that have been playing a long time. Like, they all play Ezreal. Just, just don't give it to them. You have to. He's 
He's like Lee Sin, like Thresh, that they're always lingering in the meta if somebody's going to pick it up. And I don't mind that. I think the champions are exciting. They yeah, all have sure. such a high skill ceiling with their skill shots that anybody can shine with them if they put in the hour. Altex certainly has many, many, many games on Ezreal, so will not get it. And Braum will also be denied from Gate. It does limit the more aggressive options for support, at least, that Gate could take, but you never know what he's got cooking up. There is J4, though, banned alongside Sedge. That means Zaya is the pickup here for Altex. So, unless Golden Guardians want to somehow stuff Rakan into their comp, they should be pretty guaranteed to get Zaya Rakan. Yeah, this is definitely Zaya Rakan, and it's a great matchup. Zaya is fantastic into Nautilus as Sed as well, so this could be what Immortals will really shine with. Altec was one of the better Zayas and one of the few that started Ooh, breaking it back. Ooh, this I like. Blaze is going to take Kiana as his counter pick here in mid lane. Wow, there is so much team fighting power in Golden Guardians' comp and CC too. So Immortals, their lineup is a fairly bit squishy. They need to have vision on Golden Guardians and jump them because if Golden Guardians gets the initiation, I don't see how Immortals can survive that. There is just too much coming out of this lineup. Uh, also, like it paired with the Gragas. We see this a lot with one of your favorite duos, perhaps it is Gragas Yasuo. But Keon fulfilling a somewhat similar function here. Yeah, pretty much the same thing. You, you don't actually need the knockup. If you just bring somebody into Kiana's range, she will do the rest. And this is uh, something different. You know, we've seen a lot of Zoe, we've seen a lot of control mages, especially this meta, but not that many people are playing Assassins. Kiana kind of feels like the only one that people are even looking at. Um, and Blaze Zola, a very talented player, I mean, is known for his Azir, was known for, again, those those more meta, slower, farmy style champions, but this is a, kind of a turn, and I think if you're, you know, trying to get a win, which at this point is very critical for both these teams, he has been the best performing player on his team. Give him some agency. Like, give him the ability to really carry a game because, you know, at least if nothing else, you'll you'll know what the game looks like after 20 minutes time. Right, and you'll know that you counted on your strongest player. So that's what you have been using to get a lot of wins before. And why not do it now? I love the composition that Golden Guardians has put together. It will always come down to the execution because you can actually whip everything really badly and not get anything done. But when you have so many tools, you can afford to throw a few by the wayside and still get a devastating team fight. Curious to see how Keith looks in the lineup. I, mean, I have seen Altec play a couple games already, but now onto Summoner's Rift we go. Immortals versus Golden Guardians Academy. Loser gets out of playoff contention for a brief moment at least. Oh look, a bird! I believe the winner technically stays in. Oh, that's cute. There it is! The duck the and the The fabled toad. duck of Summoner's Rift. Truly adorable. Oh, goodness. It's a, it's a nature tour right now. This is the mini Gromp, I think, before he eats the shroom. Yes. And that, I'm not sure what it is, but it is also very cute. It is a chimera. <laughs> <laughs> sure! <laughs> Alrighty. Well, coming to battle here as far as Summoners and Runes go. Nothing out of the ordinary. Of note, Hail of Blades appears to be at least today's keystone of choice for Rek'Sai. So good. I mean, I think people are afraid of running Hail of Blades because you miss out on a lot of potential value you could have with the Precision Tree, specifically things like the Alacrity stacks, which can really snowball your gameplay. But Minions at the same fallen. time, would you rather have something that isn't guaranteed versus the guaranteed high attack speed? that you get out of the Hail of Blades, especially that it got a tiny little buff lasting longer. Yeah, I have note, I uh, certainly have eyes on this mid lane matchup here. Both the Blades, Olive and Insanity are uh, kind of become standbys of Academy mid laners, but this is a very different type of matchup. Red buff start here for Potluck with Alorum helping out. Zion Spartan actually gonna wait to see if maybe Alorum wants to face check through this tri-bush, and indeed he will. I don't know, not gonna get too hasty. Gonna stop punching. Pow. More punching. Pow, pow. Way more punching. Conqueror brought. Just keeps chasing. So annoying. Get away from me. <laughs> Wait, Alorum, he's gonna keep punching you. Yeah, he's gonna keep chasing him. Keep punching. Passing pretty good hit for Set. And Set, the punching keeps going on. The Haymaker out. Oh my They're god. Just ignoring him anyways. Alorum is solo. He lost his potion already. 
I like that play from Zion. <laughs> Zion has been having a good split as well. He's having fun. Oh, uh, this is fun. Keep punching. Uh, Lauren's kind of zoned off the wave now. Level two for Zion's button. Ooh, so he doesn't feel confident moving up against Alorum because he knows Rek'Sai started red and she's about to finish her camp. So he's fearful that maybe Rek'Sai can sneak in if he were to overcommit. Here is the level two though for Alorum. So things will start to settle down a little in the top lane, but very different story here in mid. Good to see the farm even. Insanity as expected has the early push in the early levels, but level three hit for Kiana and doesn't look like a Blaze Olive had to go through any potions. So actually feeling just fine right now. Those early levels are absolutely the roughest for Kiana. Yeah, once she starts getting the abilities that she needs, she can do whatever she wants. She doesn't even have mana problems, which is a crazy thing about a champion that spams so many abilities so fast. Well, Hard will take down a ward actually. I believe that's what he got. He does use his Cry's Bloom though, so. Perhaps I was mistaken. Regardless, he's gonna check for the Scuttle Crab, which has of course spawned. So it looks like Hard's gonna finish taking the blue and then take the crab. Interesting route here. You see that Rex actually she went from the crab down here to the grab the wolves and then routed right back here and then just came back here. So she actually just wasted about a minute to try to potentially protect Alorim from a tower dive in the top lane. Just looking out for his buddy in the top lane. Bit of a loopy loop loop though. Good hook there from Keith, actually. Damage on the gate, but the knockup's gonna land, and away he goes. Nice for root there from Altex, so about equal as far as damage trades. Good CS lead from Altec, though. A, a whole minion wave and then some. Yeah, 10's not bad. Goroko gonna try and keep the wave here for as long as he can. And the Blaze Olive fighting, gets electrocute Proctor. Protobell does not connect. Dodging that Paddle Star as well. Clearly knows kind of his way around this matchup. But again, with Sanity having the push, means that Zoe can try and ignore you for as long as possible. And the Zoe now knows exactly what's going on. You saw the pings on the camps. They know that Krugs and Raptors are up. But I don't think they know that Hard is here just yet. Alorim is in so much trouble once the Face Breaker comes out. Very sneaky here. Zion again just Trying some presence, gonna charge in and oh, looks for it but doesn't get it. Hard though with a wraparound. Gets the flash, gets the knockup, but I don't think they have it under the tower. Haymaker is almost enough silence, but wants it. Flashes in for first blood and Golden Guardians make it happen. That was so close actually. Alorim almost got the trade kill, but the wave is now really troubling for him. He's gonna need Rek'Sai to help him out. He doesn't even feel confident to teleport back in the lane because of how likely a return gank is. Really nice from Hard there, the patience here, and then this dive is just calculated perfectly. His bottom lane, Keith has found Altec, Igniter's down, Gorka flashing in there! Altec walking to Academy! Not dead, but making it look close. Is Keith getting aggressive once again? So close there. So Golden Guardians really being aggressive in the laning phase, finding two avenues to fight with, and two flashes burned as well. So now that the Predator boots have come out and that hard has flashed, I need to see him be making some more plays. You have the tools to snowball. Can you use them properly? Well, Zion gonna try and freeze Alarm out of as much yes as he can. The wave is pushing away though. So Alarm just gonna have to bide his time and be patient. He will collect. CS, gonna get that one there with a nice long range Q. Still has seven to pick up as well, I think, in that wave. So this is a great time. Look at the minimap right now. We need to see Kiana and Gragas roam to the top lane. These two can dive top. Aatrox is not level six yet, and Set is. They're going for it, and this could seal Alorim's fate. Very well coordinated on the blast cone we go. <gasps> what? They're not doing it? I think they're expecting someone to face check, and indeed, there's the face check. Supreme display of talent gives hard the kill on the potluck. Hey, you get something else for it. So they at least knew that something was going to happen, and that was potluck's game stance earlier, trying to defend the top lane. He goes for it again, but Golden Guardians thought one step ahead and trades the dive on Aatrox for a kill on the jungle. Yeah, really nice kill. Very quick there for Golden Guardians. As hard and the Blaze Olive already do a nice start together. In fact, the whole top side. Though. Golden Guardians is looking good. Ignite there, the Insanity found on the ground as Gate still wanting to trade back here against the Nautilus, but 
haven't quite even things back up either in the CS department. I figured out what it is about Zoe that is annoying. If she gives me summoner spell envy. She gets to ah. do so many more things than I do. Like in one game, she's basically played three league games. Good hook there again from Keith, locking down gate, but Siren Rakan can be pretty tricky to lock down. It's not like something like a Leona where you can throw all of the CC. But still, I like that Goroko and Keith are willing to fight here, They're keeping the CS very respectable now. Less than a wave between the two, B uh, two ADs. As Potluck charging into the enemy jungle. Maybe now it's time for a dive of their own, but Hard has already spotted him. Yeah, Zoe is on the way, so Golden Guardians have to respect that the mid lane Pryo is not in their favor. So they concede that ward and might even concede the dragon. Fine spot and back to his old punchy ways. Massive amount of damage done to Alorum. He's going to be forced back again here. Potluck, though, going to find a kill maybe on the high. Hard going to flash out of there. The bubble lands and see you later. Potluck getting some revenge, takes down the enemy jungler. Great move there from Immortals, knowing that the support had been free up. They linger still around the red side and find the jungle. Even get the flash, too. That was hard that we wanted to see him use his own flash to either kill Altec or Alorum. Now he won't even find a single gank with that. Great stuff from Immortal. Expecting quite a few roams traded back and forth as well, though, from mid lane, because the plays all over. His next purchase was, in fact, Moby Boots. So, imagine he's going to try and get out of the lane and influence other areas of the map quite often, but Insanity's job, of course, is to keep him pinned to his tower there in mid. IMT, though, have more than enough space after the successful play in the bottom half of the map to take the first Drake of the game they pick up the mountain. It is traded and Nautilus is here. So while the control ward spots Golden Guardians, Immortals is still not ready for it. They are running to it though. Pete's up here as well. Although he's always going to push this out and roam over. So four members here for Golden Guardians. Very similar to the look that IMT just had around the dragon. It looks like they won't have any problems picking up the Herald. In fact, the Blaze Olive's just running top lane. Going to try and find a combo onto Alorum. No flash for a little while longer. Flash, ulti, Root's gonna land. Science Spartan gonna move him back into in towards death as he takes the kill. Great timing. Look at the top right corner. Alorim's flash comes up in two seconds. One, two, three. Okay, his flash is back up. Nailed. That was a little, little longer than I anticipated. But still, you know, single digit yeah. seconds away from coming back up. Very well timed there for Golden Guardians as the Blaze Olive puts those Moby Boots to good use. Help Zion Spartan up in the top lane. Bottom lane, though, not going so hot right now. Keith did leave to help secure that Rift Herald, but that means two plates here for Altec and Gate. And Altec can be primed to be a strong carry here. I think his ultimate really puts him in a great position to deal with what Golden Guardians is trying to do. But he'll still need the Rakan and Zoe to deal a lot of crowd control to make sure that Gragas or Kiana just don't jump Altec and delete him instantly. Expecting some continued movement here on either side. Sanity with the blue buff should be pretty swift at pushing out these waves. And I do wonder if Golden Guardians are going to wander down here to the bottom lane. Or if they are not, they're just going to kind of have their run of this 2v2 for now. I think they can. They definitely can continue to play around bot lane because Altec is almost with his Essence Reaver. As long as you have a BF sword, you're happy to play with your AD because that's the damage that you need to pretty much deal with anybody. See Zion again continuing to be a bully here in the top side. He's actually 25 CS ahead or so. And a Blaze Olive with the Umbral Glaive is going to turn his attention to the weaker side of the map for Golden Guardians currently. Glad you pointed that item out. It's going to be really impactful moving forward with the Moby Boots. He can get a lot of value out of just cruising through the jungle, clearing out vision, and allowing champions like Keith Nautilus or Fragrance's hook. Combo lands, almost gets it finished, but Keith looking for the hook does not find it. Well, he's always fell asleep, and now Keith gonna get harassed back by Insanity. Pollock thought about pressing R on that Nautilus, but he knows he still has depth charge. Oh, good bubble. Gonna have to be a block here for Blaze Olive. Does indeed tank it, so Keith will be safe. 
anything else that Immortals can get here, because it's going to turn into that control of red buff that they used one time to get a kill onto hard. Keith, man, you got to get out of sight. They're going to keep stopping your port. I think that was blind. Here we go, though. Gate going to charge into mid lane and see you later, Blaze Oli. Potluck picking up his second kill of the game. That was what we wanted Immortals to use. They had red control. The Golden Guardian still did not respect that Gate could be so fast using Flash and the ultimate to commit onto Kiana. Gorka just left again, farming what means he can, trying to keep the CS respectable. Keith is going to see the red buff being taken, but it is going to fall, so Keith will just take the control ward out instead. There is a Drake up in a minute 10 or so. I think Immortals is happy with the Drake. You know, they're continuing to play around bot side. They know that top is kind of lost from the level one that Zion did and the ganks that happened to Alorim. Golden Guardian should acknowledge this and play safer around these lanes because of what Darshan, Zion Spartan, is doing. Wonder if Zion will also think about joining for a potential fight. We'll find out in 40 seconds. If the team do want to make a stand for this next objective at all. Uh, big dragon there. I think both teams will definitely want to have that. They will get a lot of value of it. And this Rift Herald might be everything they need for it. So this could actually end up getting a turret in the top lane by itself if both top laners choose to teleport in for the dragon. Get the feeling it was timing out, which is why hard dropped in space. But this is actually still a fairly effective option. We'll join the wave actually about the right time. So nicely curated there by Zion and Hard. And Zion's just going to force the him off. This tower is going to give a massive amount of gold over to Zion Spartan. In fact, that tower might be dead, but I'm not sure they're going to win the race. It will be close. But Shelly is more than enough to give Zion Spartan that extra gold. Plus 570. And just before the plates drop, Altec and Gate finish off the tower as well. Beautiful timing there. And Golden Guardians. Gives up the dragon, but they can go for a tier two. You see Gragas is about to come up to the top lane. Kiana had a chance to assist, and they'll leave it at that. They're happy that the trade was secured. And look, Oshima for the Kiana in the game. That was your favorite. It is my favorite. There's lots of extra terrain to play with. Most importantly, there's extra water everywhere. Lots of brushes there to continue to hide and be really annoying as you can hop over walls. See if uh, Blaze Olive can make things happen in the mid game. That second Drake, though, did go over to Immortals, as you expected from. So they do have two stacking up, and we'll get kind of first grabs towards that very powerful Ocean Soul. Oh, wait a minute. So you actually prefer Ocean with Kiana versus the Mountain because mm -hmm. you don't like the extra terrain, or is it just gets complicated? So it's mainly because uh, Ice is her most powerful element. And this is the only transformation that has extra water in it. Okay. So you can actually get, you basically can, you can almost always get Mountain, we'll say in a second. Hook there onto Keith, no, by Gate, sorry. On Gate, by Keith, good kill. We figured it out. Yes. But to expand on the Rift thing, there's walls everywhere, so you can almost always get uh, Rock from, for Kiana. Uh, and there's like a decent amount of brush, but the Ocean Rift does add more, so you now have more access to that. But your least common element, which is water, which gives you ice, is way more prevalent on this rift than any other. In fact, it's the only rift transformation with extra water. So you actually just get more access to not only your most powerful element, yeah. but you just get all of your elements more often anyway, because there's just so much more stuff. That's perfect, right? Your entire kit depends on you or using your W to get that stuff. Yeah, well, the first time you like invade the enemy jungle and Root someone of taking water out of their blue buff, you're like, oh, this is pretty good. That's an element that we don't actually see, because it wasn't until you pointed it out that. Yeah, see, there's a little pool of water. water the blue right. Yep. Because it, it just looks like an extra vert, you know, effect, but the fact that it's water. Wolf Pit is and the Raptor Pit, I will, I think, also has water in it. So there's way more stuff for Canada to play around. So we'll see if Blazov can actually get anything done or if we're just going to be talking about the Rift transformation for the rest of the game. As IMT <laughs> still ahead in Drake's down in gold, though, as GG did find a pick. But this just keeps happening. Same scene of the crime. Keith, when will you learn? Potluck with his third kill of the game. He's taken all of them, by the way. Have they not learned? This is what Immortals has been doing all day, This is right? the unsafe zone. Don't go to your own red buff. <laughs> it's not your jungle. It belongs to Gate, Potluck, and Insanity. 
Alright, well, Gorica with the Essence Retriever finish is the same there for Altec, and it does seem like we'll be waiting for that next break, but I have to think that Golden Guardians this time will be looking to contest in some sort of 5v5. Zion Spartan is quite powerful. The lead he's got for himself has translated into a pretty early Trinity Force. Yeah, that's what you want to see out of your set. Going for that Trinity is just probably the best item you can get on him if you're going for that Bruiser style. So we see uh, Kiana staying mobile here in the top lane. Trying to get the uh, weakened tier 2 in top lane. At least uh, worried for its potential life. Still time though to set up for that objective in a minute 30. As hard as easy clearing out vision. Because as we've noted... We've kind of split the map in two this game. Yeah. This red buff <laughs> belongs to Golden Guardians. The other one belongs to Immortal. They're like, oh, so this is our safe zone. Yeah, not usually how here. it works. I really want to see if they go back to the re their own red buff and Immortal can catch them again. Because that would just be beautifully poetic. Yeah, well, I like this, at least. Rift is going to be summoned here in mid. And they're going to line up to maybe try and take this. The Blaze Olive is looking for the wraparound play. He's going to get spotted there by Potluck. Good price. He could have sniffed that one out. Didn't have any vision of it. Ulti there from Gragas is trying to buy time. Shelly, one more hit. Not enough. The mid tower will stay up. Oh, that was good from Immortals. But not only protecting that turret, but sending more members down there because a Blaze Olive would have flashed ulted had there not been reinforcements on the way. I'm also curious to see if Kiana wants to leave at all in the top lane. Might be feeling confident about a 1v1 versus the Aatrox, although it could be close. Let's have Ignite, though, so it kind of feels like an unfair fight. Hmm. I don't think she beats Aatrox right now. Maybe once she gets her next item, the Dust Blade. Looks like he's just going to push the wave and rotate down instead. So Golden Guardians are respecting the power of this next Drake. Immortals, though, do take the Crab first and do kind of have that vision already set up. So Golden Guardians going to have to take a little bit more time if they want to get in the area. Instead, mid-priority, they do Vifor. They will grab it and take the tower down. And now the rest of Golden Guardians moves down to try and contest for this objective. Great timing on the mid lane turret into the Dragon Collapse. Immortals, though, they have the Scuttler. So that could be enough to deter Golden Guardians. And at least it slowed them down. Yeah, it looks like patience here for Golden Guardians not wanting to start the objective just yet. They'll actually move back around to mid lane Zion spot and will hit the Drake there. I think just trying to start it up and bait IMT forward into some sort of fight. Alorum, though, looking for a TP flank. They give it up. They don't know where Kiana is. All those brushes are really scary. And I'm starting to see exactly what you're talking about. A Kiana that is MIA constantly might be scarier than one that you know is hiding or just running straight at you. Whatever reason IMT decides, that is not the direct they want to fight for. And they're already ahead on that objective, so... Seems wise to give it up if you don't think you can win at the ensuing fight. That will mean that Golden Guardians are staying ahead in gold, but not by too much. So we may have another lull as we wait for the next objective, or perhaps the teams do want to try for something a little bit sooner. Still plenty of power to be taken as well, so I think maybe, uh, maybe some more waiting between objectives once again. There's waiting, yet both teams are happy because they have enough firepower in their composition to actually win a fight despite a gold disadvantage. You have a lot of crowd control and damage on both sides. And, you know, if a Rakan lands a really nice ultimate or a knockup, that's a one fight. And it's the same thing for Gragas. Uh, actually, it's every champion on Golden Guardians' side, but it's the same thing for them. Their ultimates can all be game winning. Heath maybe found Potluck, good hook. Tunnel actually, I think, got interrupted there as well. Flash ulti there for Kiana, and that's a 500 gold shutdown. Gotta be more careful there. Look at the map. Nobody had shoved out the waves. Everything was in Golden Guardians' favor. And remember, this is Golden Guardians' jungle. The red side belongs to them. The Ooh, map has been flipped. Another pick, maybe. Root does land onto Gate, but no one there to follow up still. Hooks landing nicely there for Keith. Zion Spartan now starting to exert his will over the bottom half of the map. He walks in and steals the blue buff. He's very powerful right now, and he just wants to team fight. You know, he wants to get in there, use his ultimate. We've only seen him use it once. But when you have a Trinity Force and you're about to finish that Sterex gauge, if you're not fighting at this stage, you're 
not getting the most out of your champion. Yeah, it makes sense for Cedric. He always wants to be fighting somebody, but weirdly, nobody wants to get in the pit. Yeah. So throw down. If you play your champions according to the lore, you'll actually do better because the lore is kind of tied into how you're supposed to play them. I think definitely for Set, that's very true. For a lot of the champions, especially the newer ones. Has all tied in nicely as that final outer tower does fall. Golden Guardian starting to build up a large bit of map control. Uh oh, Keith! Keith gonna get caught again near the red buff. But maybe they can get him out of here. Hard is gonna protect him. Nice stop one step for Keith to save him. Hard though, blocking the incoming battle star is nice. And a good flash from Keith because he was gonna die had that connected. Stay safe for now. He's going to go back and spend uh, quite a bit of money. In fact, Golden Guardians pretty flush with cash, although both teams may be due for a reset shortly. The largest discrepancy here is in the top lane. So 2,600 of a lead for Zion Spartan. So this set is the strongest member, yet not participating in the fight for Golden Guardians, which is why they're hesitating in finding any 4v4s because their strongest member is just not there whereas Immortals is strong side which has been their bot in jungle is always present. Oh, I love Go this again. play. Altec is going to get ulted there. Will not burn the Featherstorm. Hook's going to land as well. Here's the Kiana. Great ulti but it doesn't quite kick him in. But Altec did not have his ultimate and that's why he couldn't use it. Now Gate going to have to run out of there. It's four members of Golden Guardian still chasing him. Barely going to miss the knockup, but the Moby Boots are kicking in, and Kiana going to combo it through. Gate cannot run anywhere safely, and that's actually what? not enough yet. But Gate's still on the wrong side of town. A Blaze Olive is going to run him down. Gate is buying time, but finally is felled. Why would you flash there? That is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> You're dead for sure. That's a Moby Boot Kiana, and that flash would have been a great tool to have for the next team fight. So actually, Immortals is now even weaker for the next team fight now that their bottom lane has lost all summoners. Golden Guardians is definitely going to get this second track. Yeah, they've kind of taken over all of the map at this point as Zion Spartan is going to kick Potluck out of his jungle, but not before he can finish off the Gromp. But again, nobody wants to fight the set 1v1. They've got enough control on the other side of the map that they should be able to take this Drake uncontested. He, he reminds me of One Punch Man. He's just so strong and no one is really there to challenge him. Just lonely in the side lane. Well, you know what? If no one's going to challenge you in the side lane, eventually you'll stand down the Nexus. So I think Zion's okay with his life in the 1v1 right now. He is no stranger to pushing side lanes. That's his thing. That's what he's been doing most of his playing career. If you've been watching a long time ago when he was Darshan, it was all about the jacks. That's the break we expected is going to be taken by Golden Guardians. Also, QSS here for Blaze Olive, trying to be a little bit respectful of the possible CC. Zoe in particular, because of course, did not want to take cleanse for his lane matchup. But he needed Ignite, and is again going to play back, but Dive will not come through here for IMT. Golden keeps growing, almost 5k up for Golden Guardians. I think at this point, it's kind of just looking at, you know, how cleanly do they play between these objectives? And they're doing really well. They've been getting those dragons back to back. I think they're on track to secure the third and fourth with that gold lead. And one of the things about these compositions, when it's so much about AoEs in the dragon pits or in the river, once you hit that 20 minute mark and the enemy team is not on soul point, you are having such and influence in these fights and in the mid lane that they back off, they have to respect it, and you can always have a stronger setup than your counterparts. What they've been using to get these objectives and what will probably get them a soul. Make it rain, gonna use a bullet time as well to clear the wave out. Gorka just making sure the mid tower stays up for as long as possible. It's 26 minutes and it's still not down. And I did just see an assist ping down towards Zion Spartan. I'm not sure which side that was. I think it was the Golden Guardian side. Maybe wondering if someone else is shadowing there. But again, Zion Spartan, as we can tell, is uh, very content here in the bottom lane 1v1. In fact, Keith uh, would have been a good play, but he's unfortunately on top of a ward. But I don't currently do anything anyway. Ha. Yeah, Keith is just chilling, being there menacing. Ooh. MF is here and... Ooh, Hex oh, no. Flash. No real Flash, I think. Wait. Good stun there again. The Blaze always going to try and take down Potluck, but now in trouble. Going to have to flash out of there, but will be killed. Nice stasis there. 
for Potluck, but the damage is still done. It will be a trade eventually. Hookland's going to be a double, perhaps. Gate, looking low, does go down to Gorica. Two for one in favor of Golden Guardians. That was really close. It looked like Potluck had been caught, but he actually had a really nice outplay using the ultimate to dodge out. Oh, it was by on spot, and that was so spicy. I think he interrupted a dash with Face Baker and then flash altered Alorum back towards his side of the map, but unfortunately could not finish off the kill. Alorum actually holds on to his flash, but it looked really cool, Crumb. Yeah, it does. That's part of the set MO. Looking cool while breaking faces. Let's see the fight in mid lane again. So they have sight on Potluck. And a blaze all the heck's fun. He's one shot Grexai before, but now that he has Merc Treads, look at what he does. Buys more time, extending the distance with Nautilus, burns the ultimate to survive, and then Rakan comes in for the extra help. The stopwatch, just to look cool, style points, not really doing anything, but it was all about the ultimate and the flash that salvaged that play. Unfortunately, Golden Guardians there first. Keith manages to lock two down so they can finish off the fight ahead in kills. And back towards his objectives. Baron up, Drake up in a minute 40. Golden Guardians is, again, playing very straightforward, clearing out the vision, putting down some of their own. They have so many pick tools on this comp. They wouldn't do Baron without getting a pick, so committing for vision in the red side of Immortals is not their priority here. They just want to make sure that they know that Immortals is going to secure vision there for the Baron in the future. They're all eyes are on that Ocean Soul. That's the best dragon as we've been talking about all day long. Also feels like uh, Silent Spot is starting to get a little too much room in the side lanes. Those tiles will be under threat pretty soon. In fact, even a Blaze Olive is up towards the top lane, just catching waves and continuing to build up pressure. So despite not having two TPs, it is more of a one through one at least th at this point for Golden Guardians. And no one's looking at Zion Spartan because Rek'Sai being a physical damage threat alongside Aatrox is not well suited to deal with someone that's armor stacking as much as he has with the Tabis and the Bramble Vest. It gets even tougher when you start to factor in. There's a freaking stair X gauge already. Zion so also did take down the tier two in bottom lane, so make it four towers to one currently for Golden Guardians. Up almost, yeah, about 6,500 gold, kind of closing in on 7k. As Golden Guardians gonna reset and rush back out on the map to contest for this Drake. It's three full items for a Blaze Olive as well, so it's gonna be tough for Immortals to navigate this team fight. Nine seconds and Zion Spartan is already here. So Golden Guardians have river control and wards in the back. So they actually know everybody on Immortals and where they're at. This is tough for the IMT lineup to get the focus that they need with Zoe. Boys Olive also wrapping around. He's already set up. He does not hold the position though, but you can see it's completely dark to where the Kiana is right now. This is what Golden Guardians want. A Kiana in these tight corners is bound to hit a fat ultimate. Got no vision either, so Golden Guardians can also just start the Drake. In fact, they've already started it. Just about dead as the Scryze Bloom comes in. Keep still hiding out. IMT at least gets some mid pushing happen, but again, the Kiana wraparound still happening. Gonna find it, looks for Potlock. Gets killed though instantly. Did not have a way to really get out of that as Hard goes back in. Gorka at least will get a trade, but it's two for one now in favor of Immortals. And they'll have to run. Alorum does not find another knock up, but they'll still chase. Mid tower down, Gate gets a flash out of Gorica. And a sleep goes down spot. And thankfully, he's awfully tanky with the Haymaker and the Steric Cage up. So, no follow up, but still, that was a fight that Golden Guardian started, and they do not win it. Yeah, they got so antsy wanting that dragon fight so badly that once they get the objective, they were still on team fight mode, and they overforced something when Immortals had already left the ideal position. Kiana goes down, gives a spree. This is Immortals. Trying for Baron, but this is so risky. Yeah, taking a lot of damage already. Keith and Gorica in position to maybe challenge, but as always, Zoe is just keeping them out of the objective. But IMT will take a reset. Seems like Golden Guardians aren't as worried, so we'll watch this one again. The positioning was good, but whatever the team fight execution plan was, it did not pan out. Yeah, they're not in the tight corridors like they should have been coming into the pit, and so committing this many spells when even Keith isn't even there just shows that they were clearly on different pages and 
what can you expect when you're subbing in a different support? Being on the same page is something that comes with time. The other thing I noticed, watching that back, is that uh, Rexha's Tremesans kind of completely ruined the place all with flank there. Ah, uh, yeah, they knew. You can see footsteps the whole time. It's always so hard because, you know, it's never in the kill feed. It doesn't tell you, hey, you died because you got spotted. Now, IMT going to continue keeping vision on the left side of the map. Is only one Drake away from the soul here for Golden Guardians, so... As, uh, it's getting pretty precarious, despite the gold lead that Golden Guardians do still have. Mortal's gonna have to tread carefully in open areas, though, because again, as soon as the vision goes down, one player mispositioned and somebody's gonna get picked off. In fact, I believe Olive is getting quite brazen up in the top half of the map here. Ooh, what a great bubble. Q assesses it off. But Blaze Olive actually doesn't even want to contend with the potential follow-up. Yeah, that bubble is the reason why two members on Golden Guardians have bought QSS. They've seen it happen to Keith before. They don't want to fall prey to the same trick. So just to reset, two minutes, 10 till the next Drake is up, but perhaps Baron can be started. So Golden Guardians does not want to go for that Baron just yet. They know their win con is just two minutes away. If they can get that Dragon, and that Dragon they secured really easily because their setup was supreme. They shouldn't be thinking about the team fight that they lost, but how good their setup was and how they secured it. Oh, nice push here from IMT. Catching Kiana, pushing out top lanes, all grouped together. At least it'll be a trade. That's a good trade for Immortals. They're behind, they're getting more gold and extending the mid lane vision for them. This could be the vision that they need to either see that Golden Guardians has not set up proper Baron vision or try to catch them out as they go into the Dragon Pit that will be the next battlefield in the next minute. So it seems like Golden Guardians are also still committed to that 1-3-1. But luck will spot Kiana. Darshan is so crazy strong right now. Five items compared to two and a half on Alorum. Curious to see if that gold lead has grown any more significantly than when we last saw it. But might have to wait on that. 55 seconds now that Ocean Salt is available for GG. Seems coolly happy to wait here. Games have certainly gotten longer, Chrome. They have, and that's when playoffs are on the line. No one wants to be the team that is making that crucial mistake. A win here shoves the opponent further down in the standings, and the race is as close as it is in the LCS in the Academy. All right, well, Zion still pulling Alorum in the 1v1. A blaze all He's going to see the ward here. Sweeps it out. They'll still have the Umbral Glaive active. Gorka going to be the target. QSS a little late, or early, I suppose. So it does get picked off there. Nice work from IMT. Is Gate able to find that? Three sums from the bottom lane. The entire arsenal was burnt from Altec and Gaiden with huge consequences, too. What in the world was that timing? Did you actually get Inhibitor and deny the Ocean Soul from Golden Guardians right now? Huge. I did stick around, but he's alongside hard. They can look for a flank here potentially, but I'm not sure they want to go for the 4v5, and that is just going to delay the the soul from being given over and give Immortals the opportunity to get the soul themselves. I don't think that would have happened had Immortals not taken that tier two earlier because that made Gorica be further up than otherwise he would have been. And that pick was so impactful. It's, it's a moment to definitely look back in the replay and figure out a way to have a better setup. Definitely kind of tell the struggle here as well. With Golden Guardian so committed to keeping the Kiana in a side lane, it's dangerous times for the trio of Golden Guardians that have to hold down mid lane. So, see that right there is exactly a moment where Keith could get cut out. Yeah, yeah, that that is exactly the kind of play that can catch you out. You don't have vision on support jungle. You're walking way farther out. You're dealing with super minions, and Zoe just left the top lane. So that's the kind of stuff that looks safe now. But when you look at the information that came into that play happening, you understand that it is risky. At least there is only one objective to play for right now. Four minutes until that next strike. 
which will be the soul for both teams. So instead, it is Baron that we'll turn our attention to, although I think Golden Guardians are more concerned about threatening inhibitor towers, given how far forward a Blaze Olive is in the enemy jungle. Set though. I'd say get caught out, but Set doesn't really get caught that often. Kiana is flanking, so the Immortals have lost control of mid lane, but a fight is just so close to staring each other down. Might at least get to the Baron and try and deny some vision. Maybe beta fight in here. Blaze Olive also back towards the top side, but they are going to commit to starting this Baron and at least force some models in here. There is one Scryer's Orb. It just got used now. They know this is going on, but they don't know where Kiana is. Don't know where Hart is either. Keith also in the front line. There's Hart on the side. Alorum is the target. Going to burn the ulti here, but now the jungle is going to get chased out. It means they have to pull off the Baron and Blaze Olive again flanking, but Potluck is continuing to monitor the choke points and gets a knockoff. Goes invisible with the Kiana. Dancing back around Potluck, who's actually winning the 1v1. Going to force the ulti out. Now there's the counter ulti. Good stopwatch, but that's going to be a Blaze Olive dead. Potluck did so well there as a Blaze oh. Olive dashes over to the minion. He actually, I think, is going to live there. Very inventive little play, but he's still not out of there yet. Dashes around Insanity, nails him with the Paddle Star, and that is going to be the kill. That was almost godly, and it was actually the Tremor since that caught him once again. Potluck doing so well to spot out the flanker from Golden Garden. It's going to lead to a Baron play. Gragas has smite, so as steel as possible with his burst. Seth, though, as you mentioned, does have to stay mid for those supers. So I don't think it's going to be anything other than the steel attempt, but Lorem's going to maybe shut that down. Indeed he will. Baron over to Immortals. That was all Potluck. That was the play from the Rex side. Single-handedly turns what was a... Casual, lukewarm Baron sneak attempt into just a flat out team fight for Immortals that nets them a kill and Baron. I, did, I was remarking before how, you know, he's getting a lot of these kills, but Potluck actually putting that goal to good use. A Rek'Sai that has items is still really relevant in the late game, especially against targets that are not stacking armor. Kiana and Misfortune will always be in danger. And when he has Flash, he's even crazier. I mean, this is a full damage Rex site. It certainly is and has been working out nicely for Potluck so far. Blaze Olive has upgraded his broken stopwatch into a Guardian Angel, though, so he's pretty much full as far as build goes. This feels like we're one significant fight away from the game ending in an instant crumb. Almost 40 minutes in this game as well. We're on the edge, but that edge is creeping up closer. A minute on that dragon. Now both teams are on that ocean soul point, and they know what we know, that that is a win condition. All right, IMC pushing back through mid. Trying to create as much space as they can between the enemy team and the Drake they want. Blaze Olive still top lane, no teleport, remember. And this lives Immortals with complete control here. And this control is going to transition into vision around the jungle, which can easily be used to fall back into the dragon and then get the fight that you want. Utilizing so many dashes over the walls, it's only Altec who actually can't hop over something and engage on it. Tried to pump here for hard, but... Not going to get caught out. Kiana is wrapping down towards the Drake, but they find hard. Good flash there from the Gragas. But Rek'Sai going to charge in. Potluck way too far forward. Now Keith with a great ulti to kind of try and keep the rest of IMT out. Potluck low, but he's still with the GA. Here comes the Kiana, though. Has to try and find a target. What a ulti there from Zion Spine as a showstopper. He's going to try and combo through, but Gorak gets chased down. A triple kill for Altec. A resurrect there for the Kiana. She will die as well. A Blaze Olive just nowhere to go. Make it four. That's the quadra there for Artek. Almost a pentakill. But that just might be enough to end the game. Immortals win another team fight. It definitely is it. The Ocean Soul is not needed. A Baron is enough. Immortals is going to put Golden Guardians deeper in the standings and will get themselves closer to the playoff race. All right, let's see if the window for the Penta is still on. Not going to even go for it. Stein's fun. Just going to have to watch. His face crumble. Last hit is going to be there. Zion Spun is going to live for a little while longer. But the last hit was the kill by Potluck. So don't worry about it anyway. Immortals, they'll take the Nexus kill instead. Wow. It felt like Golden Guardians had the tools to win that. You had Zion Spartan doing so much work in the top lane. But ultimately, the Zaya Rakan did so much work in the team fights that it let Potluck, the Rek'Sai with so much damage, do 
engages and DPS in a unexpected fashion. I don't think anybody regarded him as a threat, yet he kept killing Golden Guardians members. Often the unsung heroes, but both Gate and Potluck put in a lot of work in that game for Immortals, and they will claim a critical victory late in the season. Yeah, and both teams, again, with relatively new rosters, be it the bot laner from Immortals or the support on Golden Guardians. And I think it's true. It is easier to slot into a team as a AD than it is as a support. Yeah, well, a fun one, but after the break, we take a look at the game's biggest moments and we'll wrap out Academy for the week. Welcome back. We're going to wrap up our final game here, Crumbs. It's been a pretty long day of Academy. Some long, grindy games, but the standings are starting to maybe get untied a little bit. Yeah, grindy for good reason. The playoff implications are real. Emotions are running, and it shows in the gameplay. This game started off really well for Golden Guardians. Darshan doing so much in the top lane. Why do I keep calling him that? He needs to keep a name. <laughs> So great first blood there for Hard, but uh, Podluck just had a blaze all his number, it felt like, in so many of these situations. He did really well. If we had to choose an MVP, it would be Potluck for me, outplaying many of the Golden Guardians members, finding a lot of picks, and with a solid game plan, camp the bottom lane, and here we go. This is a fight that was a bit of an overreach from Golden Guardians. A blaze all of getting interrupted with Rek'Sai and Rakan could not survive the combo which lets the backline of Immortals do their thing and keep chasing. Take a tower here. Keep getting aggressive. Get one more. It's pretty tricky to kill. 
the models just didn't really need to slow down. And now at this point again, where they all, where they started at all crumbs in the red yeah. side of the enemy jungle. Oh, uh, it's kind of crazy that it actually came down to a fight at the red side. And in the end, Ablazov just doesn't make it into the fight in time. This has been a 5v4 until now. And of course, the team that had more members ends up winning when you have such a strong Zaya and a Rek'Sai that bought so much time for your carries. Yeah, Rek'Sai did so much work, actually. As Altec was sadly denied the Panther by the end of the game, but we'll skip that bad news. Again, wow. another roller coaster here. Golden Guardians up almost 7,000 gold for IMT Broader all the way back, but close to a 10k swing. What a beautiful graph right there. You hate to see it if you're Golden Guardians hitting a almost 7k lead and not being able to close it down. But on the flip side, Immortals hanging in there with such a deficit just shows their resilience is almost ready for playoffs. Certainly going to be looking for one more win as we wrap out the day. Though let's see how the teams stack up. This will be fun. So Cloud9 and Dignitas have some space. CLG cannot make playoffs. But everybody else is still in there, Crumb. Yeah, everybody else is in there. And to me, the two teams that look really exciting are Cloud9 and Evil Geniuses. Out of nowhere, Evil Geniuses just somehow look way more coordinated this week across all of their teams. And then Cloud9 just quietly building up, whereas Dignitas is kind of deteriorating. They're, they're struggling a lot more than they did in previous weeks. And I'd like to see them pick it up so that we have a closer top of the table. Take a look at what games we have coming up next week. Academy returns with TSM versus Golden Guardians Academy, and then C9 versus 100 Thieves, as two more matches will happen before the showcase match of Team Liquid versus Evil Geniuses Academy. Big implications on, on that one, because Team Liquid can keep EVG tied with them, or EG can get closer to those top four, which is really important when it comes to playoffs. Yep, certainly, again, still lots of spots to fight for. We've got more league action coming up during the break. Hop on over to twitch.tv slash LCS for Monday Night League, where the Tigris and the gang bring you the LCS matches of the week, all before the Bud Light League Lounge. But that does it for us over here on Academy. Catch you soon for Monday Night League.